truth lies not so much in men's experience, as wonderful as they may be, but in the Scriptures, the Word of God. Sick believers do not need to remain sick. In James 5, verse 14, It says, if any one of you is sick, he should call on the elders of the church to pray over him. James was writing to Christian believers. He asked them if any of them were sick. It is a given in our life, in our fallen condition, that our bodies on occasion tend to sickness. And eventually they die. However, as the verse directly below points out, it is also a given for the believer that God is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you. And if we look in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, God said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. In another translation it says, If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay close attention to his commands, and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of these diseases that I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. God identified himself to Israel in a variety of names and ways, and here he revealed himself to his people as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you. Healing is not just something that God does. Healing is a part of God's very nature. I am the Lord who heals you. God was is and will continue to be a healer. Remember always that you serve a healing God who has declared that his intent toward you is not to bring on you any diseases, but to be the Lord that heals you. God is for us and not against us in the matter of healing. And in the book of Exodus, it describes the deliverance of the Israelites from Egypt. Their journey to Mount Sinai and the events that occurred during the so their sojourn there. The main theme of Exodus is redemption and the deliverance of the children of Israel from bondage in Egypt. And this is a type, type of redemption and Moses who led them is a type of Christ. God's heart towards his people is health and healing. And let's take a look at following scriptures on healing. And that will be in Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. And in verse 26. There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land, the number of thy days I will fulfill. In another version it says, Worship the Lord your God, and his blessings will be upon your food and your water. I will take away sickness from among you, and none will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you a full life span. And in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 11, We'll be reading through verses uh, 15. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Wherefore, it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he sware unto thy fathers. 
and he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine and thine oil, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep in the land of which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all the people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but he will lay them upon all them that hate thee. The three final discourses of Moses which are recorded in this book were given while the Israelites were encamped in the plains of Moab. These discourses reviewed the history of the Israelites up to that time, repeated and expanded upon the laws that God had given, and listed the promised blessings for obedience and cursing. And uh, it promised blessings for obedience and cursing for disobedience. Moses was addressing the children of Israel only two months before they would cross the Jordan into Canaan. Now we're going to go into the New Testament in the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God's spiritual healing power extends to all our diseases and our infirmities. And in Psalms 103, verses 2 and 3, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgiveth all thine iniquities, and who healeth all thine diseases. The greatest of the Lord's benefits is that he forgives all our sins, but the psalmist here charges us not to forget another of the Lord's benefits, that he heals all our diseases. All of our diseases. There are none too hard for him. God heals them all. No illnesses are excluded from the great benefits of God. Whatever disease you or a loved one may have, it falls under God's promise to heal all your diseases. God's spiritual healing power extends to all our diseases and infirmities. And in Psalms 103, verse 2 and 3. I'll just be repeating. Again, this would be the King James Version. Uh, I'll just be repeating uh, again what I had just read. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities and who healeth all thy diseases. Next verse. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. If we look in the book of Isaiah, Chapter 53, verse 5. Talking about Jesus here. But he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And 1 Peter 2.24 Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. It was Jesus willing offering of himself on the cross that bore our sins. But the very same tormented body of Jesus in his scourging and crucifixion purchased for us the blessing of divine healing. 
for by his wounds you have been healed. God responds to prayer for healing. Look in Genesis chapter 20, verse 17. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Amalek and his wife and his maidservant, and they bare children. Verse 18. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Amalek because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. And we're going to look in Numbers chapter 12, verse 13. All right, I'm going to, um, just so you know a little bit about the background of this verse that I'm going to share, uh, I'm going to go to Numbers, verse, um, chapter 12, verse 1. And I'll be reading through chapter, uh, through uh, verse 13. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman who he had married for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto him, unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam. Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation, congregation, and they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore, then, were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, O God, I beseech thee. So we see in these verses that God, Moses cried out for Miriam's healing, and God heals her. But the reason why she was, she got leprosy was because she came against God's leadership. And I know I'm speaking, uh, speaking on healing, but this is a good case in, you know, for us to be careful to not speak out against leadership in the church. So, praise the Lord. The principle here is simple. Faithful Abraham prayed and God healed Moses. The, pr the principle here is simple. In the previous verses, faithful Abraham prayed and God healed. And in these verses, Moses prayed for leprous Miriam and God healed her. King David understood the power of prayer for healing the sick. And we can see this in Psalms chapter 30, verse 2.
Lord, O oh Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. The ongoing principle seen here and elsewhere in the Bible is the power of a believer's prayer. God honors and answers prayers for healing. Abraham, Moses, and David believed in God's healing power and in his willingness to heal. And they prayed for it. And God was faithful to answer. Jesus taught on the same, the power of a believer's faith-filled prayer. And in Matthew chapter 21, verse 22, It says, in all things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. And, you know, sometimes in our prayers, whether it be a personal prayer for our own selves or for a loved one, or a brother or sister, sometimes it can be very emotional. And it's okay. It's okay if our prayers for healing are emotional. And we can see this in Second Kings chapter 20, verses 1 through 5. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good by thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, before Isaiah was gone, out of the middle court, that the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Serious, excuse me, serious illness can be emotionally devastating. King Hezekiah was sick unto death. And to make matters worse, the prophet Isaiah brought him the Lord's message, message that this illness would be fatal. The Bible reveals to us that having learned that his illness was terminal, Hezekiah wept bitterly. He wept bitterly as he prayed unto the Lord. Note that God regarded both Hezekiah's prayer and his emotion. I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. It's okay with God if we are quite emotional in approaching him with our healing needs. Now let's take a look at some examples of Jesus' healing. Jesus healed a broad range of illnesses. In fact, he healed every disease and sickness. And we look in the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. <clears throat> and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatics, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. We as Christians serve a healing Savior, Jesus Christ. The gospel record abound with illustrations of the healing miracles of Jesus among the masses. The men and women on the street, 
He preached and taught, yes, but he also healed every disease and sickness among the people. And I say every disease and sickness, Christ's healing power is without limit. His healing touch is available to everyone. There is no illness beyond his ability to cure. He healed them all, including those that were ill with various diseases, those who were suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures, and those who were paralyzed. So don't hesitate to bring any healing need to Jesus, because in his ministry of healing, he has demonstrated his ability and his willingness to heal every disease and sickness among the people. Jesus' healing power was prophesied in the Old Testament. You can see this in Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all, all that were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself, himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. The prophet Isaiah spoke of it seven centuries before the New Testament era, that Jesus would take up our infirmities, that Jesus would bear our diseases, and that Jesus would heal all that was sick to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. So I would just say, be encouraged to reach out to Jesus for your healing. When we look in uh, Matthew chapter 14, verses 35 and 36. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased. And he besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. <clears throat> we'll look in Mark chapter 1, verse 40. Verse 40 and 41. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. Believe the Lord for divine healing, and have faith in his power and willingness to heal you. We'll look in Matthew chapter 9, verse 20 and 20 through 22. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that, from that hour. And also, um, in the same chapter, verses 27 through 30. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith to him, to them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you.
Healing comes through Jesus and not our faith in faith. It's our faith in Jesus. We're going to go to book uh, to the book of Acts, chapter three, verse one. And we're going to be reading through verse sixteen. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother wo- mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, my, why marvel ye at this, or why look ye so earnestly on us? as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus, whom he delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye, need, ye, but ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. And kill the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. You see, the people were looking at Peter and John, and Peter was telling them, "It's not, it's not by anything that we, that we could do. It was not in their power. It was by faith in the name of Jesus that this man was healed." Peter understood the proper object of our faith, and that's Jesus. He told us his listeners how the lame man had been healed. Now we're going to look in uh, the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 12. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Next verse. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Next verse. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And I I want you to notice that in this passage that the lepers were not healed the moment that they were prayed for. that they were healed as they went to show themselves to the priests in obedience to Jesus. 
There may be times when we need to walk for a while in faith, and then the healing comes. Although many healings in the Bible were instantaneous, some were not immediate. You must be willing to maintain steadfast faith as you pray for divine healing, and be and don't be discouraged if your healing doesn't immediately occur. Now let us take a look at how healing is ministered to people, and one of them is by prayer, as we had already have, have already seen, and another one is by a spoken word. And we're going to look in the book of John, chapter uh, 4, verses 49 through 51. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down here, my child dies. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servant met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Even at a distance from the nobleman's home, Jesus spoke the word, Thy son liveth. And as the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken and returned home to find that his son was alive, there is healing power in the spoken word of faith. And in the books of Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 33 through 34. And there he found a certain man, man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole, arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. There was a man, a paralytic, who had been bedridden for eight years. And P Peter said to him, Jesus heals you, get up, take your mat, and immediately he got up and was healed. Again, we can see the power of the spoken word of faith. Peter simply declared the truth, Jesus Christ heals you, and the miracle of healing followed immediately. And in Acts chapter 14, verses 8 through 10, <clears throat> And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak, who said, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet, and he leaped and walked. Once more we see the healing power of the spoken word of faith. The preaching of the word of God inspired an atmosphere of faith. And Paul perceived that the lame man had faith to be healed. We can also see by the laying on of hands, and we'll see this in the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 10 and 11. And there was a certain disciple at, disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. In verses uh, 17 and 18 in the same chapter. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received his sight forthwith, 
and arose and was baptized. Led by Jesus in a vision, the faithful disciple Ananias found Saul and announced to him that Jesus had sent him to heal his blindness. It is important for those who are sick to understand that Jesus is able and willing to heal them. And as, as, as Ananias had laid his hands on him and Saul's eyes were, he had immediately received, received his sight. Uh, one thing I want you to notice in this that it wasn't an apostle, it wasn't uh, anyone who was in great leadership. It was a disciple like you and I that uh, was led by the Lord to lay hands on Saul to receive his sight. So God can use you in healing. Uh, another way is by filling a person's heart with faith-building, uh, life-giving word of God, which I'm doing here through Scripture. Uh, I know it's a lot of Scriptures, but again, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we're going to look in the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 4, verses 20 through 22. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and help to all the flesh. Another way is by calling on the elders of the church to lay on hands, to anoint with oil, and to pray for you. And we see this in the book of James, chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. And sometimes healing comes from what would seem to us from what would seem to us to be a rather unusual, even remarkable method. And we'll look in the book of John, chapter nine, verses six and seven. And when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. Now, I know that seems a little strange that, you know, someone would spit in the dirt, make mud and put it on your eyes. But I'm sure the blind man, when he received his sight, really didn't care too much about that. So sometimes God will use different methods uh, to heal people. But who are we to say what methods God, God uses? So, you know, you might, you might be sitting there and you're in a service and God, you know, through the preaching of the word, may be speaking to you to go up for healing, and you know, you want you want to be healed your way. No, it doesn't work that way. You know, God has His ways, and He tells us that His ways are above our ways. You know, we can't always understand why God wants to do things the way He does them. We look in the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. And so much that they brought forth the sick into the street and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about into Jerusalem, bringing sick folks 
and then that was vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. So again, we can see that, you know, as Peter walked by, that his shadow uh, could heal the sick. So these are just some of the examples that God uses to heal. You know, he heals in a variety of ways. But the common denominator is, is this, that God does heal. And so we can look at um, who may be used to, br to bring divine healing to those that are in need. Uh, so we'll look at, in Matthew, how the early apostles healed. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called unto him the, his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. We'll also look at uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely yet ye have received, freely give. We're going to also look in the book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 6 and 7. Again, I know I've already read this, but I'm just uh, re reiterating the fact that the uh, healing comes, uh, the early apostles, how they healed or some instances where they did heal. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So that was the early apostles healing, some examples. A larger group of 72 disciples was sent to, by Jesus to heal the sick. And we can see this in Luke chapter 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. And verse 8, same chapter. And into whatsoever city ye enter and they receive you not, eat such things as are set before you. And verse 9. And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. In the Great Commission, Jesus encouraged all believers to heal the sick. We can see this in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 through 18. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The Great Commission is for all believers to share the good news of Jesus in all the world. And God will confirm the gospel with supernatural signs, including healings. And the gospel that he will confirm is not spoken just by apostles and other ordained ministers, but also by them that believe. Every believer can share the good news and can minister, minister divine healing to the sick. Jesus' encouragement to every believer is lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now I just want to touch on also uh, spiritual gifts or gifts of the Holy Ghost. And these are supernatural gifts which the Holy Spirit endows upon individual Christians to minister to others. Uh, one of these nine 
uh, gifts as the gifts of healing. And it is not given to, it is given to some, but not to all. Notice in the scripture, in the verse, it says, to one is given, to another, to another, and to another the gift of healing. And I'll touch on that in a minute. Uh, we find this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 11. Uh, again, I'm just trying to give you some examples on how some of these healings uh, took place. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these work if that one and the self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. So we're going to look at first Corinthians chapter twelve, verse twenty eight. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, and diversities of tongues. Uh, verse 29. We're going to go right through verse 30. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret? This is a similar list of, of spiritual gifts and ministries indicating that to some God distrib distributes the specific gifts of healing. So once again, we're going to look in Psalms 103, verses 2 and 3. As I'm on the end of my message, I just want to touch base on a couple, couple of things that I had spoken previously. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Next verse. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities and who healeth all thy diseases. God's heart is for healing. It is a benefit as is the forgiveness of sin that Jesus secured with his death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus healed again and again as he walked on this earth, and he remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus still heals today. Biblical healing methods vary, and they include healing prayer, the laying on of hands, the spoken word, and anointing with oil by praying elders, among others. Jesus has entrusted the healing ministry to his church. The first apostles healed the sick, and so did a large group of, dis of disciples in the Great Commission. Jesus encouraged all believers to lay hands on the sick for healing. And there will be some in the churches whom the Holy Spirit will endow with the specific gift of healing. In Exodus it says, I am the Lord who heals you. In Psalms it says, I praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and who heals all your diseases. And before I close, this was kind of an afterthought after I had prepared this message, but Sometimes uh, there are hindrances to receiving your healing. And unbelief could be one of them. But also unforgiveness. Sometimes uh, 
unforgiveness, if you have unforgiveness in your heart, uh, it may be a factor, one of the factors why you might not receive your healing. So I'm just going to touch on Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. So in closing, I just want to ask a question. Do you believe? In Mark 16, verse 17 and 18, it says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So once again, I know it was a lot of scriptures, What I was trying to do through the reading of the scriptures is to build up the faith, to receive that which God has for you. Bob, could you just play a little something in the background? 